Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wednesday show. I'm Hammer, and I'm joined by my two favorite Minions co-hosts ever, Gen T Maxi. Hello. And Terry DeMantis. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you doing, Terry? Yeah, not bad. How you doing, Jen? I'm dying! <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. I mean, at least wait for an hour until the show's over. <laughs> No, 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 no. If, she, if she dies on stream, it's going to be great for raining. No, it's a good idea. It'll be, it'll be great because I'll have died from cramps. And then you can just yeah. rub it. It's, just, it's killing me. It's, I don't I'm know sorry. why. It's okay. I just don't understand why anyone would want something like this. And <laughs> I stand by my opinion. If, if, if I've been a dude, this is some bitch who is leaning on my left dick or my left Testy, yeah. and then he's shifting to the other one every five seconds, and then it goes away, and then it comes back, and I just can't mentally prepare myself for when it comes back. I'm like, why would somebody want that? Uh, just so you know, Hammer, you're in John Cena mode where your avatar, uh, you can't see it. Oh, good. <laughs> I think, you know what? Ranting about it made me feel better. I think that's why women do it, because you rant about it, and somehow the diaphragm makes it go away for a minute don't know <laughs> I stand by that let's see if I can fix this okay voila it's funny last week it was rumble that wouldn't do it no this yeah. week it's YouTube that won't do it but it's fixed now okay. it's weird it's weird because all the settings are right there's a little line that says um how do you want to look at this and it's a, it's the stream yards broadcast window which is what it is and this is set the same for everybody on both copies of OBS. It all points to Chrome.exe StreamYard broadcast. They're all the same. Yet, for some reason, I get nailed on one or the other platform for no apparent reason. All I do is switch it to something else, like a live chat screen or the YouTube screen or anything else, and then switch it back and it clears itself. So, I don't know what to do. I guess I'm going to just have to rebuild the entire screen from scratch. It's going to be a nightmare. It took me over two weeks to get it done last time, so I gotta try to make a match up. Maybe, maybe that's another thing is maybe I don't want to make the match up anymore. Let let Rumble and, and YouTube just completely diverge. You know, it's still gonna be our voices. It's gonna still be represented, but does it have to? Do they have to look the same? Because I've made them kind of not look the same to some extent already. So yeah. Why not just go crazy, right? Be creative. Why not? I mean, if you've got the time and uh, that's something that you want to do. No, I don't have time, but I have to do it anyways. <laughs> uh -huh. so, um, before we get to the topics, let's go ahead and see who's in chat. Um, the uh, Rumble chat was very active before the show started. So yeah, yeah. we have uh, Tier uh, Kiverdam. Hi, sweetheart. Um Problem is, I have these things. Everything set so big, so I can read it. That when I scroll through the list, Green Badger indoors, I guess, because he doesn't have outdoors. <laughs> um, Spud Gun. That's the problem. Is making everything big is when you scroll. Uh, Cannibalistic Wizard on Rumble. Uh, what else we got? Tall person. Welcome, tall person. Oi. Hoy. Mm -hmm. And then over on YouTube, I'm sure everybody who's on Rumble is going to be on YouTube. Uh, Assassin of the Grey was uh, first. And Keyword M's there. Tall person's there. Um, I think everybody, Green Badger Outdoors is actually outdoors. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, Frost, mm -hmm. Frosty Glass is out there. Hey, Frosty. Um, is that everybody? Green, green Badger is simultaneously indoors and outdoors. And outdoors. Depending, uh, which, which platform is on? Oh, there's uh, Your Way Pat. Welcome, sir. Yeah. And, hi, Mash. Hello, Tal. Okay, I think I have everybody covered. Um, cool. Let's go over tonight's uh, topics real quick. Uh, Freak, um, I don't know if you've heard about this or not, but our, our old friend, Anita... Sarkeesian has decided to shut down her website, Feminist Frequency. I did hear about yeah. that. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know if this should be a bet that's going on that she's just broke. 
I think that's the reason why, because they were doing a big push six months ago that they were running out of money yeah. on that website. So yeah, that, that, that tends to happen when you embezzle it all. Well, that and, <laughs> and I, I don't think they have anywhere to go at this point. Like they, they're, they're kind of what really started sledgehammering <laughs> all of this shit to begin with. Like, oh my God. The games don't represent us. There's not enough about yeah. us. This yeah. bitch who never really played games to begin with. There's actually a video of her saying that. She's admitting that. She yeah. was in a classroom and she's like, I don't really ever play these games. Um, there's another topic for, for Jen to talk about uh, splits. That's uh, the recent news that Justin Trudeau and his wife Sophie are separating. Mm. So if you have background yeah. information on that, we'll want to hear about that. And finally, Amplified. Um, this kind of made its way around Twitter. Um, I was trying not to pull too much from Twitter because I've been pulling from Twitter too much lately. But this actually yeah. came to me from Twitter. Um, there was a, a young man called Marcus Schroeder who was um, at a LGBT event and he was preaching uh, the Bible. I don't know if it, what denomination was, but it was Christian, obviously, with the Bible. And yeah. he was arrested by six cops. Jeez. And the reason they arrested him is because he was using an amplified device. Not a bullhorn, mm. but a microphone with a speaker. Yeah, which yeah, basically yeah, is a bullhorn, it. basically the same thing. And that's what they charged him with. Um, but in the States, I don't know if this is the same in your countries, but in the States, if you're on a public sidewalk, you can say whatever you want. It's, you know, except the limitations of exciting violence and all that kind of stuff. But you're allowed to yeah, say yeah. whatever you want. So if there's a an LGBT it, thing going on and you're staying on the sidewalk talking about, about the Bible, you're perfectly allowed to do that. They can't it, arrest you for that. Good, Jeff. It's not just that. It's also, then they have to go after every protester who's effectively done the same thing. Mm -hmm. And they won't. So... They don't really, I, I don't understand what leg they have to stand on. Like, they they have absolute lefties who fall around Christian groups and, and pull that crap. Like, one of the, um, so I believe this one was in Ontario, but one of the school events where they were really, you know, picketing the, the schools, mm -hmm. and uh, they had an MP try to lie and say that uh, he was a he was attacked by one of these uh, demonstrators and most of which were our Muslim community because they're really really mad at Trudeau um and the dude hit himself in the face with his own with his own horn <laughs> you know um we um goodness uh no, it's just, like, I just don't understand why they would say that. I don't think it's a law up here the same as you. Um, okay. It's one of those things where we, we, we are supposed to have something like that. But uh, it's like everything, the rules kind of just shift when, when it's convenient. And they're not supposed to. You know? You, uh, you, have, you have complete freedom of speech to say anything Justin Trudeau approves of. That's what it seems to be, you know. Um, it, it does have that uh, appearance to it. It's not legal, though. Like, we do have a constitution. It is supposed to be something like that, but it's not written the same. And that, in law, is what matters. It does. Right. What, so, about, what about Australia? Do you have a, if you're on a sidewalk, are you safe kind of deal? Is that something? I wouldn't or? expect to go, no. Um, I haven't looked into the precise laws surrounding it, but there were people arrested for gathering uh, during the COVID lockdowns. They're like, the, you, you don't have anywhere near the freedom. Like, the, they, they present the, the, the illusion that you do until you try and do something they don't like and then suddenly uh, it's a problem. So mm -hmm. we well, don't have anything to the extent of, the US, not at all. And and you can tell that they probably do hide stories from Australia just the same as they do up here. I, oh. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not even just a little bit easier because you, you guys don't have as many internet um, providers to begin with. 
-hmm. don't know if that even factors, but I imagine it probably does. I'm only mentioning it because uh, I'll forget if I don't. But the other day, uh, there was a story cycling out of your country for this 16-year-old girl that um, they took off of uh, off of a list for uh, a lung donate, like a, a lung, lung organ donator's a list. Transplant. Yeah, because she, she wouldn't take the COVID shot. And they're mm. trying to imply that it's because of her dad. And I'm like, no, she's Malaysian or Filipino. I'm not sure which one. But religiously, she probably doesn't want to take it. Two, she's probably seen all the crap that happens to you if you take it. And apparently in Canada, um, they can take you off the list, but they're more than happy to take your organs. So apparently your oh, organs are still fine for the market, but you, they can just conveniently leave up, you off the list. She's a 16-year-old girl. Well, it, it, I'm it's not an, vaccinated, so if, uh, if I need medical help, maybe they'll just they tell me to piss off. Basically, that's what they're going to do. And they're going to they're gonna limit your ability to talk about it because they know that this is um, medical coercion. Oh yeah, is this uh, is this happening in, in the states or is this happening in Canada? It's Australia for that one, but oh, we have Australia. one here. We have the same stuff quite often. Hmm. Uh, the the guy um, passed away. You know, uh, wow. He had two brothers who were willing to donate a kidney to him, and they took him off the list and wouldn't let him have it. But the, you know what? They were they were happy to take his organs. You know, happy to go to his wife and ask her if she would be willing to sign him up for his organs when he had two brothers. It's a private donation. They have no control over those. At least I used to think so. Yeah. Apparently they do. They can stop your family members from donating to you. Uh, um, yeah. But the 16-year-old I wanted to mention just because if it throws shade at uh, your government long enough for them to be like, maybe don't do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No, I mean, I, I've got no love of the Australian government. I think, I mean, almost every government, if not literally every government, is incredibly corrupt. So nothing surprises me at this point. Yeah, I still, I, I, I just, I don't doubt that they hide stories like that. So oh, that's I, why I brought I it up. I promise you they do. That's why I brought it up. I was like, yeah. No, my mum, my mum my mom will actually read international news to find out what's going on in Australia because she doesn't trust the Australian news sources to cover everything. <laughs> like that, that she, she literally does that. She will go read, like, I don't know what countries she's, like in, England and America, I guess, but for stories about Australia, she will not trust the Australian media. Your mom is based. You shouldn't yeah. trust any media. I think they're all corrupt. It doesn't really matter what country you're in. They're all bad. No, but um, the, the, the thinking is, like, the UK government has less motive to lie about what's going on in Australia than the Australian government does. <laughs> That's true. It's like, true. The people, in, people in England don't give a shit what's going on in Australia, so they can tell the story, and it's not going to upset the apple cart. Yeah. Heck, half the time they do it just so they can be like, look, see, they're doing that there. Yeah. But, so, yeah, my mum will uh, just go exclusively to international uh, news sites to find out Australian news, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, I, I mean, my, I really think the best news source, any, any, you know, considering everything that's happening lately with governments, Best news source. Joe Rogan are, podcast. Yeah, Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah, but it's really online, non-mainstream media. That being Joe Rogan oh, yeah. or, or Twitter or whatever. I mean, the the thing is, is like, it's like every form of research. If you're not aware of the fact that you have to shift through garbage to find facts, the internet is just the same, and it's the same as a library. You know, you could go through a library and realize that this book is better than that book. It had mm. better information. It was more clear on what it was talking about. It was more relevant to your topic. You know, sometimes you have to shift through garbage to find the truth. And the internet is like that. And I've said that to a couple of people before. It's maybe a good that, tool to use. Maybe Twitter is a little bit more reliable because community notes kind of keeps people in line. Yes, for sure. Well, you can also compare things. Like we have... Um, we have a blessed opportunity that our community is so vast. Like even just our, our, our short little community of three people, 
well, we're from three different countries. Like, yes, Hammer and I share the same continent, sure. but just just by the fact that we're still different as people, yeah, I could tell you a little bit more, or at least I could tell you where to go to find information on things. Like, you know, anything you want to know about Trudeau, he's written down. It's, it's mm -hmm. in biographies from his dad and his mom. One, you know? one thing I do really like about the community notes is that politicians aren't protected from them. Like Joe Biden will get community notes on his tweets. Mm -hmm. Like he's not like yeah. in a privileged position where you can't do that. Like he's actually made it available to literally every account can be fact-checked if the community notes wants to, you know, comment on it. It's also because we've kind of let the big wigs know with Anheuser that we might be willing to go to war with them financially too. Because hmm. the thing is, is um, poor people are used to being poor. Believe it or not, the cities are going to hurt probably the worst because they don't do what they used to do. But poor people are more than willing to grow their own food to a certain extent to, to make up for what they're not going to be able to achieve from, from the big wigs. Because this might be a big strike. And I know Anheimer is just one, one, one route. But look at Disney. Look at Hollywood. They aren't just on strike. They're struggling right now because it's not just one movie franchise going down. It's not just Disney going down the hill. I think a lot of people have been on on this like, you know what? I kind of don't want to go see your movies anymore because they suck. Well, I it, saw um, I saw an article. I didn't actually read the whole thing. I just sort of like skimmed. But the idea was that uh, if the strike goes on like too long, people are going to start cancelling subscriptions to like Netflix and Amazon Prime and all the rest of it. So when they finally resolve the the strike. There'll be no audience left to uh, make movies for. So that they're saying this, if it drags on too long, this could literally be like disastrous for Hollywood, which well, I'm all for. <laughs> it, it's not just that. It's also like the quality of the writing that they've been putting out. Like even the AI does better. And that's not that's true because right. the AI is shit. But well, even the I'm AI is still better. Well, I tell you, I take V side in this where he was saying last time there was a writer strike, it actually affected him because the shows he wanted to watch were no longer available. Mm -hmm. mm. This time, like, there's nothing that like he's missing out on. So what does he care? <laughs> and um, he has made the point that AI not only writes better uh, like TV, they they even made better protest signs than the, than the writers did, and they even uh, Brian Cranston's speech. V got an AI to write a better speech than Brian Cranston gave that would actually elicit more sympathy uh, towards the strikers. <laughs> so yeah, the, the writers are absolute garbage. I I, I think um, Elon pointed something out when he was redoing Twitter, when he was really getting rid of all all of the the fat that he didn't need in his company. And yeah. the thing that he pointed out is a small group of really efficient people outruns an overbloated company with too many idiots in it and he's Absolutely. not wrong and it's the 100%. same with the writing it's the same with the writing teams they've hired too many people they go to tumblr and it's it's the same as the art crowd don't get me wrong i like that technology has has picked up because it means the art can be processed faster but it takes away from the technique and that takes away from the love of the technique and that takes away from the art and if the art doesn't match the music and the music doesn't match the theme and it doesn't match the story, your product sucked. Like yeah, I mean, go, going back to V, like he has said, an AI cannot better cannot write a better story than Lords of the Rings, but it can write a better story than uh, Rings of Power. Or well, he calls it Rings of Power plus privilege. But and, um, and, and here's the thing: they were they were claiming that movie as being like super duper duper pretty, like you know, most of the budget went to the, the the looks of it. And then you look at the background and you look at it, and I'm like, it doesn't even look good. Like, is this a movie for rich people? Like, it's like high school uh, debut. Uh, you know, anime weebs might like this quote um, because it's a bunch of rich anime weebs with rich parents who who are like, here's the funding for a play. You know, it it was a rich movie for rich people, but it's crap when, when you're a poor person and you look at it and you're like, I remember like the 80s and the, the 90s and, and like they didn't have all the techniques that you have and their shit was better. 
Their shit no, was better. Car. Like, so they don't even the have one, that. <laughs> yeah, the one, one, of the, one of the things that is actually surprising but true is restrictions actually breed creativity. So uh, if you've got like a whole bunch of like limitations on what you can do, which they had back then because the technology wasn't as good as it is now, mm -hmm. you're forced to be creative to make the most of what you've got available. Whereas if you've got literally everything handed to you on a platter, you just go with what's safe and easy because you like, you know, uh, you, you don't need to uh, be innovative. It's, it, it's sad actually. Yeah. Um, there's something be, I, to be said for that, Terry, because going back in time, being the truckie that I am, the original series didn't really have more than maybe one or two shows that were average. Most of the shows were written really well. Hmm. And, and even though there was a certain repetition to the points of the stories, the stories themselves were actually really well. I mean, if you look back at, at some of the Trek episodes, there's this theme of Kirk beating a computer. You had yeah. the, the M5, you know, it's Kirk beat the computer. Then you have Landrew where Kirk beats a computer. Then you have um, um, the perfect robot, the one that hovered and walked through the things. That was a computer. Kirk beat that robot. Yeah. I, can't remember, I can't remember what it was, um, what the it's name a, of the robot was. A, a similar example, and this is another sci-fi show, uh, funnily enough, Red Dwarf. If you look at the first two seasons of Red Dwarf when they had mm -hmm. a shoestring budget, the show was amazing. Mm -hmm. And as the show got more successful and the budget increased, the quality just went to shit. Mm. <laughs> like if you watch like season seven compared to like season two, holy shit, it's not even the same show. <laughs> it's funny because Trek TNG went the opposite way. The first season or two were pretty bad but they finally gained their feet and became really good by the time seasons four, five, and six took over. Even seven was pretty good. So it's just the opposite. But hmm. again, well, I mean, that show became yeah. really good because of its writing. Yeah. You, usually what happens is it does take a little while for them to like find their footing. Mm -hmm. um, so like that's why I went with season two over season one because, yeah, season two was better than season one of Red Dwarf. But – Season seven, season eight, season eight was garbage. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, you, you really, uh, when they were like very limited in what they could do, that they had to lean more heavily on good writing. And that's what made the show good. Back then, though, I, 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 I kind of wonder if this isn't just Hollywood version of their version of politics. And I'm, and I'm taking this from, um, a story that I got from the Japanese anime version of this. So I'm, I'm, I'm meaning like companies, like separate companies from each other. And yes, they will poach each other's artists. They will poach each other's writers and they will wait to do it because if they want to push a project and they need the funding for it, they'll take a guy from your <laughs> company to do it. You know, and I could see Hollywood doing the exact same thing. You know, like yeah. if you put too much money towards this and your buddy is like, hey, well, you know, they're giving me more money over here. I'm not saying it happened all the time because you would know in the credits. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I I have no problem with because uh, Frosted is saying, can we just try the AI, the AI writing for a bit and see if it's better? I've got mm -hmm. no no doubt that <clears throat> if the strike goes on long enough, they will just use AI to, to write them because why wouldn't they? And it's not just that like when this is the thing that some of the actors have kind of caught on to it's not just the ai they can in fact create actors now with ai they don't need the actors they can just create a character it's gonna suck though i don't want it to get to that point i would actually like to have real humans too it's kind of like how i don't like how everything is cgi i like cgi but I don't like how everything is. I like um, I liked that Star Trek and those kind of shows had models. And I liked that Star Wars had models. And I like the, um, I'm trying to think of other shows that I used to watch that were all puppets, like um, The Labyrinth, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, Hi. all the puppeteering shows, like, yeah, they wouldn't have been visually the same or the same experience if you didn't have that. 
you know. Oh, for sure. I mean, practical effects age much better than CGI. Like CGI will look out of date as soon as the technology improves, but like practical effects tend to be more enduring. Mm -hmm. Well, they they switched to practical from practical effects to CGI in Deep Space Nine for the Defiant, mm -hmm. and nobody noticed. That's how good the CGI was. But you have to have that level of CGI. Oh, yeah, you can't yeah, yeah. just you can't just you know do something half-assed. Everyone will know right away. But yeah, they sure. they they spent a lot of money and a lot of time creating a digital version of the Defiant to make it it's, as close to the real thing as they possibly could, and it was good enough that people didn't even, didn't even know it happened. I also think it's what the focus has been on. Like when I when I think of like really good CGI, and yeah, I I'm not ashamed to say it was uh, one of the Narnia um, movies. Mm -hmm. They had this waterfall effect, and it it was it was actually really well done. Like you could tell that they put a lot of uh, effort into putting horses all the way into the water as it kind of goes down. You know, it was a very, it was, yeah, they had a water scene. There's mm -hmm. so many, so many movies that do that, but yeah, I do take credit when, when I see stuff like that, because I know that water is actually really difficult to CGI because they try to yeah. get every droplet and the movement has to be right. And yeah, I appreciate that kind of stuff. But it's it's other other places where it doesn't work. Like, yeah, um, the Lion King, easy one to pick on. Oof. Yeah, like you know, it's that was just terrible. You, you know, just lions would have been better. They could have been just like, <laughs> and you could just have somebody in the background talking for them, and it would have would have been still I, better. I think, just, I think uh, like a real life uh, like version, a live action version of the Lion King was misguided to begin with. Like, you need the, um, like, the, the stylized lines of, a, like, of a cartoon. Trying to make them look realistic is never going to work. It was just a stupid idea from the beginning. It's like, also uh, difficult to differentiate them. They all look like the same lion. Yeah, of course they do. Like, real-life lions tend to look quite similar to each other. You yeah. don't have the flexibility to... Like make them wildly different colors. Like Scar was a different color from. Yeah, he was like an, an orange. He's, he's like a dark he's orange. Not, yeah. Not with as much ease as it would be actually having the models, or at least not having. Like that's the thing with the artists. Like they really have thrown their artists under the bus. But you know they did bring in a couple of lions. Like I think they had a baby, and I think they had a, a couple of real ones, but. Yeah, they do have different looks. They do have different manes. But that is so much more effort than they wanted to put into their budget. It's like I said about the water. If you're going to put that much effort into it, then, yeah, you have to go through each and every single line. They didn't do that. Yeah. Heck, heck, no, they didn't. It's the same as the Little Mermaid. They act like they put so much effort in it. And then you look at it, and it's like some of the characters are terrifying, actually. Like the crab... They would have been cuter if they'd gone with the Crab Island crab yeah, that I thought they yeah. were stealing from, because that's what it looked like they were doing. You know, Flounder's like, yeah, you're a fish. Okay. At least go for a cuter fish. <laughs> steal, a little, steal a little Nemo, you know? Like, no one's going to notice. They're, they're dumb. They, these kids haven't watched the original movie anyway. That's why their parents have to take them to go see this new one that has nothing in relation to, to the original one, because you took out the entire story. Mm. Like, just make a new story if you're going to just rewrite the original in the first place. I don't understand their logic, except for they just want to go in circles a lot. First time I was, I was impressed by CGI was the, the uh, animated movie uh, The Incredibles. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I haven't the, seen that one, but I've heard good things. Yeah. What, what, what I got about it, what I liked about it was um, the way they handled the water and their hair. When they're in the jet, the jet gets blown apart, and the kids and the, her and the kids fall into the water. <laughs> Their hair, the wet hair, looks so real, and it was it was still just an animated thing, but it looked so great. You know, yeah, it's like wow, where is it going? And I see pictures now of people that don't exist. They're completely a, a CGI people. Artificial intelligence created these pictures. And you would think that 
person could exist. That looks like a photograph. Yeah. You know? uh, Frosted makes a good point that real lines don't show emotion, which is kind <laughs> of like an True. important thing for an actor. <laughs> so like the, the CGI lions had the same expression no matter what their actual mood was. Yeah. Music polls going up for everybody, by the way. Make your selection now. Easiest yeah. quote ever. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of CGI. I see some CGI pictures. And I, th I think to myself, how can a computer create the human face so well that I think that this is just a photograph somebody took it, you know, well, it's a, like a regular I really, camera. I really like the, like the space ones because space is another one of those ones that, yeah, it's difficult to really grasp that. Like even, even looking through a, a real microscope has people thinking that they're looking at something fake. Excuse me. So yeah, I I, I really I, I I do enjoy all that stuff. It's just there's some stuff they haven't figured out yet. And like I said, I like the practical too. I like goofy too. Like if they'd done that, like just had lions roaring and then somebody telling their lines in the background, I would have liked that for the wrong mm. reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's going to get to a point if the if the if AI can write the script and uh, AI generation images can generate people, mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of people out of business. You're what you're going to have is oh, yeah. you're going to have popular stars who will make X number of movies, to get themselves scanned, sit at home, and get paid for people using their scanned image. They won't actually have to do the work anymore. Well, not, e not even that. Uh, like, If they wanted to like really save money, they could have a completely AI-generated quote-unquote actor um, and like they don't have to pay anyone for their likeness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, the, you, could, you could have like movie stars that don't exist. Like if they use the same AI model in mm -hmm. multiple movies and like that particular one gets really famous you could have movie stars that don't exist which i think is amazing i think that's part of what's scaring them as i don't think they realized that that's what was coming like hollywood's oh. weirdly just as much into <laughs> alien guru weirdness as everybody else and they have more time to do it so <laughs> well, all i can say to the writers and actors is learn to code right mm -hmm. I mean, the same thing happened to like uh, cashiers at like supermarkets and McDonald's. They got they all got replaced with like machines. Like you, you now, you just go use the self service. Yeah, self checkout. Um, yeah. Yeah, and so uh, same thing is happening to actors. If a robot can do your job more cheaply and more effectively than a human can, then yeah, they won't hire humans if they can avoid it. it all comes down to the almighty dollar. That's what drives of all of us. So, yeah, I don't know. That, that, that's what uh, businesses are in the in the business of making. <laughs> now, on the other hand, if it does what I hope it does, I hope it encourages people to actually go out and fucking work, because I don't think that the robots are going to win out over humans. I just think the humans are fucking lazy. You know, um, maybe maybe I'm I'm talking out of my ass because I'm certainly not a writer, but. I write backwards. I have a reason for that. I have ideas, though. And I think I think there's lots of people who Hollywood gatekeeps all the time. They're happy to gatekeep. They gatekeep so hard that, you know, there's lots of people. And I know this because we've had we've had YouTube for years, you know, and YouTube tanked itself over and over and over again. But I remember seeing people with a load of talent showing up with their own cameras and Definitely no Hollywood budget, you know, and they were putting stuff online where I was like, man, I wish you kind of had a budget because I would have liked watching more, yeah. you know, or, yeah, or seeing you. Know you... I, you know what I just realized? The whole yeah. learn to code thing kind of came from um, Reservoir Dogs of all places. Like <laughs> when they're talking to Mr. Pink about uh, how waitresses need the tits. He was like, mm -hmm. got two words for you, learn to fucking type. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's true. I haven't seen that movie in so long, I can barely remember it. Yeah, same here. It was like uh, Barbie Keitel. Who, do you remember who the actors were? Um, so, yeah, Harvey Keitel was Mr. White. Uh, who was the guy who, who, who was Mr. Pink? 
Who was the guy who danced and cut that guy's ear off? Who was that guy? That was um, that was Mr. Blonde, which was Mr. Blonde. Uh, Michael Madsen. Man, that's right, Michael Madsen. That see, was a, Frost- that was a very difficult part to watch that movie. Go ahead, John. Well, see, Frosty just said something like the the uh, dinosaurs in the original Jurassic Park look better than any of the Jurassic worlds. And I'm like, there are video games right now that have better dinosaurs than all of them. Yeah. And true. and that's really sad. Like, couldn't they hire some of those guys to maybe make a movie? Like, I know it would yeah. cost them more because it's a lot more work, but they've already got the character. It's it's they have talent, they just don't want to source it, or they don't want to pay out money for it, or they don't want to compete. And that's that's kind of counter to capitalism like i said there's a lot of corporatism in this and there's a lot of hollywood gatekeeping it's been snobs for the longest time like i remember this uh especially in high school so i admit i was a weeb i've already admitted that at least twice already (laughs) but part of the weebdom was wanting to go to school to draw it more you know, like if I if I could have learned the language, I would have gone to Japan to at least try. You know, they probably would have laughed me out of the building, but I would at least have tried. You know, um, but even back then, like the art community laughed me out of the building. Like they didn't want anything to do with animation. Animation is not art. Like, yeah, it is. It's visual art. It's visual art in motion. You know, and, and then they started pushing like, um, like um, Princess Mononoke, the... I, I can't. I can never pronounce her um, that uh, author's name properly, but he's got a whole thread that are considered artwork pieces, like they're international films, mm-hmm. and the the music and and the background. Yeah, it's a it's a painting in motion. So I could see that in Hollywood. There's snobs and snobs and snobs, and and they gatekeep everybody else out. There's loads of talent that could make really good movies. They just don't want to. Yeah. (laughs) At at, at this point, Hollywood is far more interested in preaching than entertaining. And, Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody likes being preached at, so they're losing all their audience. Is that woke culture kind of stuff that's doing this? It's both. I think it's a little bit of both. So definitely it's woke. 100% in in Hollywood, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get woke. But it's also the, and I'm not meaning to throw shade at the, the Christian base because the Christian base is awesome, but they they like to dictate what other people watch a lot of times too. Mm-hmm. Uh, like not everything is based off of the Christian faith. Like a lot of North America automatically will be just because we've all kind of grown up here. But a lot of times, like, I don't think I would want to be hired by Mark Wahlberg any more than I would want to be hired by, by Hollywood, because just as much as, as Hollywood is sold out to whoever they've sold out to, Mark's still going to dictate what I can and can't put out there, you know? Based off yeah. of what his beliefs are, and I'm not putting out porn, but if my beliefs aren't like the same as his, like I really like a lot of Korean stuff, but I don't doubt the Korean stuff would confuse the shit out of him, or the Malaysian I mean, stuff, or yeah, they yeah. talk about demons a lot. <laughs> well, one, one of the, one of the reasons that my politics kind of shifted was when I was like growing up, it was the right wing who was the censorious ones. They were saying like Mortal Kombat is too violent. Mm-hmm. Uh, Grand Theft Auto needs to be banned. So I, I was opposed to them. Now it's the left that is uh, being the censorious ones, and now I'm opposed to them. So I, I just don't, don't that, censor things, and I'll probably like you more. And, and that's kind of what I mean, Terry. Like, that's kind of where I'm at when I say that. Like, I, I do think Mark is the type to do that kind of stuff. So while I do yeah. cheer for him, I do want him to build something else because I think the capitalism thing that I said is true. If you have more markets for movies, it gives more people options for their creativity. I just want to want to go with him because I do think that he would be like, yeah, you can't put that out there. Like I do think his sense of humor is limited. Um, I mean, the, the main, the main thing is, do I get to join the funky bunch? 
right? <laughs> I just want to know that my, like, as long as I'm not putting out, like, like yeah, I don't want to deal with a Hollywood because I do think that they peddle children. Sorry. I, I know we're going to get in trouble if do. I say that too often. <laughs> that, but... that, that, that's not controversial. That's, like, obvious. And that was one of the biggest reasons I, I, I haven't really watched movies. Like, the last time I went to a movie theater was the 2015 Godzilla. And I know it sucked, but I loved every second of the fact that it sucked. Because it reminded me of the original. So I, was like, I, I, don't, I don't remember what year it was, but as I've said many times, the last time I went to the movies was uh, South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. Mm -hmm. I haven't see been that, to the movie since. See, that one was worth it. But Yeah, yeah. That, that, was a, that was a good movie. I'm just saying that's how long it's been since I've been to a movie theater. It's, yeah, I don't I, know, decades. I think, I think that one of the Batmans was the last one I saw. Like Rise of... Rise of. I'm not sure which one they were. It was one of the Nolan ones, but I, I don't remember which one. But that's been a long time for me too. I just don't like. Yeah. It's not that I don't like the theater experience. I just don't like the people in the theater experience. <laughs> no, right? I know, I if I'm there by yeah. myself, it's great, you know. But, but I mean, that's a give and take too, because you have people who want to talk and people coming in late and and all that kind of stuff. But then you, when something like really cool happens and everyone cheers. Hmm. You kind of get caught up in that because I, I've watched See, on YouTube people I, I'm who. The opposite. I think I think that is annoying. And really? If everyone's cheering, I'm like, shut up! I'm trying to listen to the movie. <laughs> well, I mean, if, if somebody's talking, I I agree with you. But like, I watched um, Endgame, and there was a there. Was, I think it was Endgame, or it could have been. No, I don't think it was Ultron. But um, in the Avengers, there was a, a a part where they're at Wakanda, and they're trying to stop Thanos. And they've got a shield hmm. around Wakanda. And everybody's there except for Thor. And then suddenly Thor makes his entrance. And um, and there's a couple of cute little things that go by. But, but he finally turns to fight Thanos. And he just jumps up in the air like 40 feet. Electricity everywhere. Sky darkens to gray. And he yells, give me Thanos. And he slams his hammer on the ground. And the crowd... I mean, if you just go to YouTube and watch Endgame reaction, the crowds go fucking wild when he does that. It's just so... Yeah, and I'd, I'd be sitting there pissed off thinking, shut the fuck up, I'm trying to watch a movie here. Yeah. I mean, if he was still talking, saying something, and the, the crowd around you is drowning him out, I can get that. But after he says that, and he slams a hammer, there's no dialogue at that point. You know? It's just for effect. Yeah, no, it, it's still disruptive having, like, yeah. it, it's the same reason I don't like live music is because you've got to deal with a shitty crowd singing along. Oh, yeah. I, I don't want to hear you. I want to hear the, the person on the stage. I had that problem oh, in the car. Oh. When I'm driving the car and someone's next, um, Jen doesn't do this, but I've had friends do this where I'm playing music and they're singing along with the music. I'm like, fucking shut up. I want to hear yeah. the song. I don't want to hear you crooning next to me, you know. Exactly. I, I, I get your point there. But I think in, in a situation where it's a point of time, it's only a couple of seconds in a movie, that that, that crowd in, it, it, it contributes to the way you feel about what's happening. Because you're thinking to yourself, yeah! In the meantime, the rest of the crowd is doing exactly the same thing you are. For me, it yeah. elevates it. But if they were to just do it throughout the movie, you know, all the time, and you're definitely having... Yeah, I I'm definitely on your side. I, I would think they were a little bit heavier on the autism than I am. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, get, I get your point, and like the mood is infectious, I suppose. But yeah, it's like being at a coliseum I, in Rome, and somebody gets killed, and everyone's yeah. Like, yeah you're, you're, it's kind of. I, I guess I don't. I, I still don't like it. I, yeah. I like that. That's why I don't go to the movies. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear the movie. I just, like, even if there's nothing being said, I would rather the movie's silence than a raucous crowd cheering. It's just like, let me focus on what's going on in the movie. I don't need your bullshit. <laughs> yeah. See, Frosted, I think Frosted agrees. It's like when the audience cheers at parts like that, kind of gets me more amped as long as they don't overdo it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I guarantee you, I'm in the minority for not liking it. <laughs> like there's yeah. a reason that like there's people that are like have, enjoy it. There's like, there's like it's obviously... The people cheering are not cheering to be disruptive. They're cheering because they're like hyped up. I just don't like it. A, I, I'm, I'm the odd one out here. I, I recognize that. Mm -hmm. See, 
when I when I say the ghost shit or like the demon shit, that's basically what I mean. So like I don't necessarily want to do that in a theater. I'm actually a little bit weird about that. Sometimes I'll pre-watch something in the sense that it's a review just so I know what the hell it's about and then I'll watch it just because I'm still a scaredy cat but mm -hmm. I don't want to experience that in a theater it's like I will jump if it's a jump scene most of the time jump scenes don't have anything to be scary about but they're still gonna mm -hmm. make me jump it's, they're course. designed I mean, to do that there's a big difference between yeah. scary and startling yeah like if, if a loud noise and like some like monster just suddenly appears most people are going to jump because yeah. they're startled it's not scary it's just like it catches you unawares it's like i i actually don't want to watch the new megalodon movie because there's this one scene where i can't get it out of my head but it looks like a toe penis sorry <laughs> youtube but it does like it looks like a toe and then you look up and like did you insert a penis on that shark? Because I don't think it asked for that. We should Baby save this. We, do, 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 do. we should save this conversation for Rumble. We're gonna get blasted yeah. off of YouTube. Sorry, but I I saw that and I was like, okay, listen. I know that the uh, the original um, Jaws was kind of corny because the shark was kind of animatronic looking. It still scared the shit out of me when I was a kid, though. You know, didn't yeah. want to go to the ocean at all for a really long time. Now, now I think I, I feel like in, I'm invading their space. Actually, I think I'm fine with the sharks having the ocean. There's a lot of other things in the ocean that are a lot worse than the sharks. Mm. Like at this point, they're almost cute in comparison to some of the shit that I've seen them find at the bottom of the ocean. So they can have it. They can have it. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll stick to the pools that we've invented. And, you know, there's some rivers that are okay. You might want to watch out for bugs and leeches and shit. Have you, That's uh, an English channel. Have you guys <laughs> checked the poll out? I um, thought it was 50-50 the last time I, I checked. It, it was, oh, wow. It's it's, it's, it's weird three ways. <laughs> yeah, but last, last time I checked it, was, uh, it makes me feel good uh, if I've picked music that split the audience so perfectly like that. Yeah. Last time I checked, it was 36-36 between Blondie and Talking Heads, but now Smash Mouth is, uh, is evened it out. No, you don't. No one likes the Black Eyed Peas, though. <laughs> No, apparently not. <laughs> you don't get it, Cannibal. It's not that it's a penis. It just looks so dumb. Like it, it doesn't even look like a good penis. It, like <laughs> Megan Fox. Please explain to us, Jen, what your idea of a good penis is. <laughs> like, her, her, Megan Fox's thumb is is less ridiculous as a toe than that thing looked like a penis. It was just dumb. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't. Once I see that, I can't. I cannot see that. Your movie is no longer scary to me. I actually felt bad for the shark. I was like, you should eat yeah. everybody in this movie. <laughs> Bring some salt and pepper so you can at least enjoy it more. <laughs> so, if, so if somebody doesn't break the tie, if you've already, if somebody hasn't voted for the poll, here's your here. It's all down to you. If you vote, you could break yeah. the tie. If you don't, then I'm going to have to roll some dice or something like that. I'm not sure. Jen, did you vote? I did. Yep. Just, just pick the obviously best song. It's, just like, <laughs> it's that easy. Terry's trying to poison the well. well. I haven't said which is the obviously best song. Yet. <laughs> you want to. Wanna. Yeah, someone's going to pick Black Eyed Peas. It's going to make no difference at all. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. No, knowing, knowing this audience, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> which one should we not vote for? Let's vote for that one. <laughs> I would laugh if you so don't, many people troll vote that it ends up with a four-way split. You don't want to leave this up to me, folks, because everyone's going to be disappointed. Maybe you'll pick the back IP just because nobody did. I'm just that yeah. much of a dick that I would do that. Why not? I mean, it's ultimately up to you. I can run the same three next week and get the same results. We have advocates in the in the chat. People are saying who we should vote for. Yeah. Bye. It seems like it's one one vote for each. Well, the problem is, I think everybody's voted. I think there's 15 people out there, and there's 15 votes. There's no one left to break the tie. All right. Well, I guess. Uh... I mean, I have it at my fingertips. I could break it, but I don't want to break it. <laughs> All I have to do is get on the minions account and vote. And I, I'll, yeah, of course. That'll so that'll tip it, do. but that'd be cheating. I would never do that. It's going to come down to dice. 
you guys don't, uh, fuck it, dice. Do do I, dice. I, I do think it's it's awesome that it is exactly five votes for each of them. <laughs> All right. So, um, internet dice. Roll a die. Online dice. Uh, random dice. Full screen dice <laughs> online. Jesus, there's so many. I just use random.org. You see, I'm a little bit worried about this one now because I already jinxed myself last month with my tea joke. I rolled the and dice I told... and it came. I rolled the dice and it came up with four. I mean, I, I, not, I I'm not no, picking no, no, the black. I'm not picking one. the black eyed peas. That would be number four. No, 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 no. Four, four would be one because it'd be one, two, three would be like the three options. Then it would cycle back to be like four is one, five is two. That would put atomic. You're voting. You're 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 advocating for atomic. That's not your favorite choice. No, I'm just telling you how it should work. If you're going to use a, a die, is like, I'm not saying pick this because I want that song. I'm saying this is the reasonable way to do it. You know what I would do normally in this case is I would run a poll. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I know. Then we'd end up the same place. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. It's a real bummer not having a, a mute on the microphone. Yeah, it's yeah, really I hard think... to mute my microphone when we're dealing with this kind of stuff. But um if if the if the die if the die came up for I would say that means it's blondie. I still think that we're low key um cursing ourselves just a little bit because of the evenness of the number. So somebody has to break the cycle. I, no, I, I, everybody I, I has I voted. Have, uh, oh. we, what we need to do is we need to go find somebody to come on the show yeah. to, get, to get in chat. Go on Discord and say, hey, <laughs> get, get Eve out here. Which one would she up. pick? she pick Atomic. I think she'd pick I think Atomic. She's gone to bed. I think she's gone to bed. Yeah. Oh, she went to bed. Dang. <laughs> well... What do we do? The, the device, the dice have spoken. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You'll find out at the end of the show. All righty. Yeah. Well, at least that'll break. That'll still break it. That'll still break it. It, has, it has been broken. I the just... dice have spoken. I I actually okay. rolled dice. I can't show it to you because OBS is not going to let me do that. But I did actually <laughs> roll dice. I'm not picking out out of my own personal because I wouldn't have picked this. But yeah, we'll find out. Canada's been on uh, fire for too long. I can't have any more fires up here. Uh, we will find out in seven uh, minutes. It's almost the end of the show yeah. already. We're, we're going to run out of marshmallows pretty soon. So, <laughs> Are you guys still on fire? Uh, like every other week, there's another fire. So you put um, one out and another one starts? Yeah. Are, are these so, natural? Yeah. <laughs> or are you still dealing with people lighting the fires on purpose? <laughs> well, um... I can't prove anything because I don't have pictures yeah. like they have in, in Greece. Um, but I, 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 I'm still calling it for what it is. Uh, it probably is. No, no, no. I think if, if <laughs> Canada is still on fire, the only appropriate outro song is Burning Down the House. By yeah. Times. Too bad I didn't have that one queued up, right? <laughs> or, or Fire Water Burn by the Bloodhound Gang would also work. We don't need no water. Let the motherfucker burn. Yeah, that was that was a little scary. Cannibalistic Wizard said Hammer ain't gonna show us because he's not wearing pants. I wear yeah. pajama pants all the time. Because the edema in my legs doesn't really let me wear jeans very well. It's very uncomfortable. I could do it, but it's very uncomfortable. So I always wear <laughs> pajama pants. But I had to put a new monitor on because my old monitor died. And it got hot in the room while I'm working. Anywhere wherever you work, you generate a little bit of sweat, you start to get warm. So I took my pajama pants off and put them on the side. And then I got to the point where I'm trying to get the shows running and getting food made and all that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm in my underwear. So okay. I don't know how he knew that. I'm going to start looking around my room for a camera in here. <laughs> uh, a little scary. <laughs> oh. it, looks, it looks like Frost just broke the tie. Uh, a van just showed up with Road to Nowhere balance. <laughs> um, well, Frost has said, without a winner, I guess you just can't end the stream. <laughs> Yeah, we'll be here all night. Well, we didn't uh, we didn't really talk about anything. So uh, for, first, <laughs> first, Anita Anita's um, a bitch. 
And I, I blame her for everything because she started everything. I definitely um, cheered when I found out that she was. I, I knew it was in trouble because, like I said, six months ago they were asking for donations, so I knew it was in trouble. But when yeah. she finally says she's going to end it at the end of the year, I was kind of like, yes, another pillar of feminism has fall, fallen. Well, it, I mean, I, I I don't think it's anything to get excited about. I think that just means she's embezzled all the money she can from this company, and she's just going to start another one and start a new grift somewhere else. I, I could see her doing that, but I just don't know where she would go at this point because the main focus is still kind of on the trans community, which yeah. is eating up the feminists. And that's just yeah, she, she can just she can just uh, go like trans frequency and then oh yeah. look <laughs> I'm relevant again. <laughs> um the the second one being about Trudeau, I I didn't know that he was on the outs with her for 10 years, which means he's been on the outs with her since before he was even elected. Like he's been in power for eight years now, not 10. I it's getting close to 10, but it's been eight years. Um, he's always had a dysfunctional family. Like both mm. his parents were dysfunctional. I mean, I know we make the Castro jokes, but like Trudeau's dad was kind of a scary man. Like, I don't think he was the kind of guy that you trifled with because mm. there's both of them would beat each other. Both of them hit each other. Both of them cheated on each other. I don't doubt he was a pain in the dick to live with, too. And she's she's got mental issues. I can't remember the diagnosis. It's it's a specific one, but she's always been in the land of la la land. And then, yes, you see pictures of Trudeau sitting like a little boy. And I'm like, I'm sorry, he's just telling you who he is. I don't know who's really in charge of my country. But that guy. <laughs> Me neither. Is, he's, he's just a crazy dude. And I do feel bad for him. But at the same time, I, I think his wife is trying to escape. Because... I don't know what's going to go on with him because there's no way that that party is going to keep going. It's the same with the Dems. Like they're slowly chipping themselves away. Mm. Even if it doesn't end up being Trump, like if they somehow manage to find a way to nail Trump in such a way where he can't run anymore. Yeah. People will go back to Ron. They will. They will. Yeah. But at the same time though, they would rather have Trump because they wanted to see him finish his run. I don't think they understand that that's part of it. They want to see him finish his run because if, they're always if going they, on. If they prevent the American people from, yeah. from, from voting for Trump. Yeah. Ooh, that's going to be bad here. Yeah. That's going to be bad. I don't know what's so, going to happen, but it, whatever is going to happen from it, it ain't going to be good because there's an awful lot of people behind him. And if he, if they prevent him from being voted for, mm -hmm. I mean, there might be there might be a Twitter campaign and and that kind of thing for write-ins because even if you you can't run, they can still write them in. Mm -hmm. So, but I just can't imagine how angry half of the country will be if they prevent him from running. That would be oh, for sure. That would be disaster. Yeah, that would be disaster. That's the thing that they're not understanding. Like, there's just been so much going on. People are aware of the fact that what's going on has been probably violating more than just rights, like constitutionally, like, and, I, and I'm not, I, I don't know your constitution. I don't know your laws to the extent. That's why I listen to Monkey and you guys as often as I do, because you do talk about it. I didn't go to your educational system. Like they kind of just do like a little blanket statement and a lot of Canadians get their news up here and we read stuff. And we do because you're, you're our neighbors. Like we make a hell of a lot of money being your neighbor there's respect involved in a lot of our families. We are, we are fellow North Americans. Yes. But at the same time though, like I don't want to look into your closet all the time. Like there's a certain <laughs> sense of respect where I'm like, you know, there's nothing I could do anyway. So there's no point in doing that, but your laws are difficult because of that. It's like, I've always said, if I ever go to visit, yeah, I'm going to be very specific on making sure that I know I'm up to date on where I'm going. Because you are specific. Yeah. You know, I could go from one region to the other and yeah, it changes enough that it matters. Um you know where you're going? on the road to nowhere, which should right? be our closing song. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> but 
But um, the only thing that really bothers me about all that is that America loves just about everybody else. We love Japanese culture. We love Australians. We love Canadians. And none of those people love us. It, <laughs> you know, it's just, geez, we're it's, so bad. Um, it's not just that. I would say that's also a media campaign. Like, I can say that even from a child, there was a time where America was kind of put out there as like, yeah, you're the big brother. You're like a little bit of a hero. You've done all these things. You're really good people. Like, you're the people that if if you were ever lost, you could ask anyone for assistance. Not to say that you should do that because not every not everybody's a good person. But <laughs> most Americans are decent people. But over time, yeah, I saw the chipping away of, of America. That, you know, you were aggressive and, you know, overseas, no one really likes you because you're rude and, and you don't really, <laughs> your, your educational system went down. And a nice. lot of this is, I feel much a, lot of, a lot of this is true. <laughs> but here's the thing, on the world scale, everybody else has been doing that too, except for maybe Asia. And even then I question that sometimes. Sometimes I'm looking at them going, I don't know, maybe it's just Japan because I, I don't know where everybody is. Mm. But um i did i i would say that yeah like a lot of canadians have this hyped up idea that you guys are like half a bunch of monsters or something and you're not like it's over well democrats yeah it's also liberal it's also (laughs) you know it's and i'm sorry what i saw from from the cities that were the worst yeah i was i was feeling sympathy for the democratic cities like if you own any kind of small business or or work in any kind of small store any anything low end i have nothing but yeah. sympathy for you because it's just torn apart every day yeah or at there least it a, seems that way maybe picture, that part's hyped up but <laughs> there was a picture that stuck out in my mind it was a small shop and a woman had pasted notebook paper on the on the windows that said yeah. please have mercy i am a single mom this is all i have and that really right. that got to my heart. I was like, oh, man, that's terrible. That she had to do that, that she felt necessary. Mm. But that, but in, 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 they did spare her. Mm-hmm. So it worked. But, you know, it's just that we've come to that point where people have to beg not to be vandalized. Jeez, that's terrible. And, and mm. even then, our system has put it out there that if you work for a big corporation that it's just okay to do these things like yeah the the other day i saw one for for a 7-eleven i i'm not sure if this one was uh chicago or if this one was a baltimore one or i i don't remember but they completely gutted the store and it was the customers going in crying it was the customers going in going well this was the only place i had yeah and it's yeah complete- you see that you see that a lot there was a woman who's uh i think it was in chicago where a walgreens was mm-hmm. gutted and she wanted to go in and get pills she had prescriptions she mm-hmm. couldn't get them she couldn't get them filled because they wiped out the store yeah and walgreens left and i think there's like two left in, in chicago and they're on the outskirts i don't blame it- them for leaving i don't either well I don't even think they're doing that well. Like, I don't think these people realize that they're, it seems like they're doing well, but they're not. Like, they haven't been for a while. Like, even even we, like, we had a long stretch where we weren't doing really well. You know, my manager, they were nervous, you know, because that means cutting hours, more hours. And then, you know, yeah. people just leave because they don't have enough hours to make it worth it. And yes, that's part of turnover, but even in the u.s you guys are feeling that yeah did you see that so, thing with uh elon and, and the twitter building no you put a big x on top down? yeah see, well he has to take the x down they, they they said that he had to take it down but he put out a tweet saying regardless of what happens with that that there's been some rumors about moving twitter out of san francisco or whatever i think it is in san francisco and he's, I think he's so, just, yeah. yeah he made a he, he's, he's put out a tweet and he says i just want to be clear we're not leaving san francisco so why did he have to take the x down 
I, I guess it was annoying the people across the street, public nuisance. Mm-hmm. No, I know. Because it was LEDs and it was pointed right at the other building. I mean, it was straight uh, out. Yeah. On the other, and when it, when it flashed, if you looked at the other building, the other building was bright white. I mean, it was like it was like you put the sun right next to that building. It was so yeah, yeah, yeah. it was so bright. I mean, if you would have tilted it up so it was at the sky or straight up, you know, so if you looked down at the building, you would see the X. It probably could have gotten away with it, but. I don't know. Yeah. The people, people across the street are trying to get, you know, trying to go to sleep. They have to get up in the morning, you know. And then yeah, their yeah, entire, yeah. entire inside of their bedroom is bright white. You know, yeah, I can't sleep through mm-hmm. that. So I can understand it. But I, I thought it was interesting that he says he's not leaving San Francisco because he does have a a Tesla um, um, building in Texas. He opened a, te- a, a, a Tesla building in Texas. So people were thinking, ah. Oh, I know what's going to happen now. He's going to move the moves to Texas, but he said no. He's staying in San Francisco. He says everyone else is leaving. He says we're going to stay. So I was like, I wow, know. that's. I know that was pretty crazy. I I didn't expect that. I was expecting just the opposite. Maybe yeah. that's why I didn't do it. I was expecting to say, well, you know, I'm the only one left. I got to get the hell out of here. I, I thought that's what I expected to happen, but no. He's he said he's going to stay. So that's that's pretty amazing stuff. I I wish him well, but I think it's a big mistake. Get the hell out. Hmm. Let, I mean, let, so many let, let it die. Have left California at this point. Oh yeah, yeah. A lot of them from San Francisco. A lot of them from LA. Yeah. You know, so from the city. Yeah, it's just a, uh, it's a shame. But I mean, if you put a government in that ruins everything, people have no choice. They got to get out. So mm-hmm. it's perfectly legitimate to get out of there. Hey, of course. J- Johnny Hellcats in chat. Our Thursday night host. Um. It is seven minutes and fifty three seconds. Mm-hmm. I'm after. Technic- technically still good, but if you guys are hungry or wanting to run off, I had I had French fries at the beginning of the stream, so this is the one time I'm not hungry, but I'm sure Terry is. Yeah, I am. Yeah. So it's only what eight minutes over. Get yeah, let, yeah. Let, let Jen get no, some sleep. <laughs> Um, so let's go ahead and get out of here. Uh, thanks, Pam, as always, for checking uh, or uh, chatting with us tonight. If you can't wait for the next Wednesday show, remember the Minions are live every evening, including weekends, with most shows starting around 11.30 p.m. Eastern, seven days a week. Host and start times are linked in the description down below. Uh, don't forget our pre-show on Rebel. That stream starts roughly at 8.30, and that's where we say all the juicy things that we can't say on YouTube. So that's a lot of fun. <laughs> Stop by when you get a chance. Uh, we will be back next Wednesday at 9 p.m. as usual. I hope you guys enjoyed this show, and we'll see you again next week. Have a great night, everybody. Have a good one, Bye, guys. guys and girls.